going to be giving the State of the Church Address and, and looking forward to, to doing that. I do that twice a year. Usually I do it in August and uh, February, the first part of February, but a uh, little bit late getting to it because of this five-part series. And I know next weekend is Labor Day weekend, but uh, I just feel led to, to bring forth it. I would appreciate your prayer for that. I would also appreciate your prayer for returning to school and um, as it stands right now, scheduled to teach six classes, uh, literally from 7.45 to 3 o'clock, and um, asking God to sustain me and asking God to uh, strengthen me in that endeavor. Um, but I know that sustaining faith requires calling on the Lord and calling on your brothers and sisters to stand in the gap for you. And so um, to, God be, to God be the glory. But my greatest honor as a servant of the Lord, is bringing His Word. And tonight, we're going to conclude this five-part series on the real step of faith entitled, Miracle Working Faith, that's based on the power of God's Word. I don't know about you, but I long to see real faith manifested in my life that will cause heaven to move and to hear the prayers of of us on this earth as we exercise our faith in the Lord to see miracles happen literally before our very eyes. To see the gift of miracles, the gift of faith, the gift of knowledge, discernment, and wisdom to be carried out. To see the lame walk, the blind see, the deaf hear, and the mute speak. To see the person that's living in the darkest places in the river valley come to know Jesus Christ through salvation. To see real faith manifested. One of the hardest questions in 18 years of ministry to answer is, Pastor, why aren't we seeing the miracles happen today that Jesus did 2,000 years ago? Why don't we see that? Why don't we see people bringing the sick and lining them up for prayer? Why don't we see Jesus, you know, doing miracles today? Well, I can tell you the problem is not Jesus. He still wants to do the miraculous. The problem is if we only have even less faith than that of a mustard seed, mountains can't come down unless we as God's children exercise real faith. And so tonight we have to first ask ourselves a question. Do I want to please God or please man? As long as our priority is to please man, then we're really never going to take a real step of faith. Something will be missing somewhere along the line. But I believe here tonight, for folks that will come out to church on a Sunday night after a busy week in the midst of a very hot week, you know, as we're closing out the summer, that tells me something. That tells me that there are individuals that want to sit in the presence of the living God and that want to be used for the glory of God for such a time as this. So we want to take a step of faith. And for those of you that are here tonight and those of you that have heard all five parts of this series, I pray that God has used it to equip you and to increase and build your faith so that you can be authentic. You can take a real step of faith. If you guys would stand with me for the reading of God's word here tonight. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 is the text that I'm just going to refer to. But this again is a topical message. But this is important here tonight. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. By faith, it is impossible, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. This is real faith. This is faith that the writer of Hebrews spoke about pertaining to Abel and especially pertaining to Enoch. And I, and I taught on this faith series back in the spring quarter. So those of you that came to Sunday school during the spring quarter, you know that I broke down Hebrews chapter 11 expository style. But without faith, we cannot please God. 
Church, I think one of the reasons that we don't see the miracles, we don't see God doing, and Jesus said greater things we will see and do, greater things because he has left us the Holy Spirit, is because oftentimes if we don't take and exercise our faith to the glory of the Father, which remember, that's our key text, John 6, 28 and 29, can only happen when we exercise our faith through Jesus Christ, the Son. And if we please God, he's going to do great things through us. How many want God to do great things through your life? Amen? We want, to, we want that manifested. We want God to, to do miracles. We want God to heal the sick. We want God to, to, to do miraculous things and save every single person in this river valley and in this world. We want to be uh, the faithful servant unto the Lord to the very end. I long to hear God say, well done, good and faithful servant. But notice here, as the writer of Hebrews is speaking about Enoch, and he says in verse 6, but without faith it is impossible to please him or to please God. Impossible is something that's a difficult word. That means there's no other route. Just like Jesus said, there's no other way to heaven except him. There is no other way to get there. There is no way to, if we're not exercising real faith in these four, you know, the four sermons that I've given, and of course other places throughout scripture, we're not pleasing God. We're not giving him the honor that he is due, and therefore we handcuff God. We handcuff God. When we don't exercise our faith, mountains stay. There are a lot of folks today in difficult places. If they would exercise a real step of faith, those mountains would come down. Marriages would be restored. God would bring great blessing. Children would go from being unruly to respectful. Folks would go from major issues with self-control and temper to being calm and God-fearing citizens in our community. We would not have the domestic violence issues that are raging rampant. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but in 2020 and in 2021, domestic violence and abuse is up 30% in Oxford County. It's the highest in the entire state of Maine. Where do we live? Jason, where do we live? We live in Oxford County? You sure? Guess what the biggest hot spot is? Right here. Now, obviously, in Oxford County, you have South Paris as well. You have Freiburg. You have Cornish. You have, you know, are, are not different towns, whatever. But South Paris, Oxford, Norway, and then you have Rumford, Mexico, Dixfield. And per capita, we're the hottest spot for domestic violence and abuse in the entire state. And is up 30%. What is the answer? More money for therapy? What is the answer? Well, let's teach them young when they're kids and maybe they won't get so violent. What is the answer? Lock them up? I believe the greatest answer is Jesus Christ. I believe the greatest answer is by a faith that is pleasing to God, a faith that is true, a faith that declares, guys, we are to treat women with respect and love our wives as we love the Lord. We are the fruit of the Spirit should be manifested in every believer's life. And the last one, according to Galatians 5, is self-control. But there's brokenness, there's pain. Mountains still remain, but why? One of the things, one of the good things, if you will, about living in such a difficult time when these numbers are off the charts is there's ministry and there's opportunity for God to shine everywhere. You don't have to get on a plane in Portland and go to some foreign country. You do not have to go to L.A. or New York, Washington, D.C., Chicago, or Houston. All you have to do is open up your eyes and look around, and there are mountains everywhere in which God can bring down if faith is exercised. But we must please God. How do we please God? With faith. Faith in our Lord. And I believe you guys want that tonight. I believe God's connecting dots from not just you here, but others who would like to be here tonight. Others who you know, are going that God is, is ministering and doing something to the depths of their soul. 
I can see God stirring in different people's lives. I could see it today during worship, during the sermon, I, conversations with folks after church, conversations up in my office, visitation, that God is stirring people. God is shaking a few people. People are beginning to ponder and think about, do they have real faith? But look at this next part in verse 6. For he who comes to God must believe. Notice the writer of Hebrews does not say can or maybe or could, but says must believe that he is, that he is, Jesus Christ is, that the Lord is God, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Jesus would say, seek and ye shall find. The prophet Isaiah says to seek him while he is available, while it is still day. Seek him while he may be found. And I can tell you, church, when people begin to seek God, miracles will begin to happen. God will begin to move. As we stand in the gap and we seek the Lord in prayer and in meditation and we seek God like never before, Great things will begin to happen. Why? Because those things please God. When we have a sustaining faith, when we have the elements of faith, when we have a miracle working faith, they please God and God responds. Wouldn't that be cool if revival broke out here at 89 Congress Street? What does that take? It takes a sustaining faith. It takes an element. It takes a real step of faith. It takes the scripture. If you will, just turn with me back there in case you didn't know this. John 6. Turn back there with me. Chloe, will, if you don't have a Bible, she'll have it on the screen. She's very good at sword drills, especially the electric kind. She don't even, she can just, it's all right there for her. John 6, 28 and 29. Okay, 6, 28 and 29. Then they said to him, what shall we do that, that we may work the works of God? They asked Jesus, what shall we do? You know, his audience, the people, you know, what shall we do that we can work the works of God, that we can exercise our faith, that we can be faithful unto the Lord? And look at Jesus' response in verse 29. Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God, who's referring to his father, that you believe in him whom he sent. We must believe in the Lord, and as we believe and as we exercise our faith, God will be faithful to us as we seek him that tells us that we believe, that tells God that we believe in him and that God will bless. But look back at verse 6 of Hebrews 11. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Miracle working faith does not come out of nowhere. Miracle working faith comes out of one who believes in the Lord to perform the miracle. It's not you or I. It's our faith that's being exercised. It is, it is as we step out, God will step in and do the miracle, praise God. But we must believe. I remember the old song, Only Believe. It's a great song. If we only believe. Well, church, as Christians, we're mandated to believe. If we want to see the work of God the Father carried out. I don't believe it's God's will to see people suffering and marriages crumble. I don't believe it's God's will to see families divided and broken. I know it's not his will that we are 30% higher in Oxford County with abuse. It's crazy. Matter of fact, I'm, we're hosting, we're going to be hosting this fall, a seminar by Oxford County. They have called and asked if we could host one for this region, okay? And we're going to do that because Rumford's a hot spot, and we certainly know all about that. And so to say, okay, what can we do? And they want the faith community to get involved because everything government is doing, I don't know if you guys notice or not, it's getting worse. The more money we throw at stuff, it's not touching it. And right now, 2021 is estimated to be anywhere from 10 to 15% higher than 2020 was. PFAs, child abuse, domestic abuse, P 
People beating each other up. Spouses beating up on each other. Kids beating up on their parents. There's some of that going on too. The unruliness that's happening all around us. But it's a great time for God to start performing miracles. But what will real faith produce? I want to look at some of these miracles that aren't the miracles that highlight a revival service, such as divine healing or salvation. I want to look at some of the practical things tonight. And out of these practical things, God's going to equip us so we can handle greater things for the Lord. Because let me tell you guys something. As soon as God brings forth a miracle of great proportion, there will be a line at this door. Will we even be able to handle it? Do we even have the prayer life, the self-discipline, the commitment? I can tell you right now, church, God was the poor. I can't be the only one working the altar. I can't be the only one following up. The only one preaching in the pulpit. You know, you look at history and you look at the great awakenings and God began to stir young people. God began to stir middle-aged people, older people, children. There is a sacrifice that comes with a great revival of God's spirit. We have to have the practical things down so we can prepare for the outpouring of God's spirit. It took Jesus teaching three and a half years with a lot of practical things that they didn't even understand until they had the Holy Spirit and filled with the Holy Ghost that they understood really what Jesus was teaching. But these practical things are important. The first one, real faith will produce righteous affection for good works. It will produce righteous affection to do things that please God. Turn with me to Matthew. And Chloe, we're going to look at several verses here. I I didn't send you this list, my Apollo. I sent you this morning's list, but I did not send you tonight's. Matthew 5, verse 16. In the midst of the Sermon on the Mount, as Jesus is finishing speaking about being salt and light, look at what the Lord says. Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Remember, to be able to carry out the works of our Father, we must believe in the Son, Jesus Christ. But we must let our light shine before the world so that they may see the good works in us. Real faith will produce righteous affection to be able to perform good works to the glory of our Father in heaven. This principle of real faith, to want to do things that please God, real faith will produce this. Real faith will give us an affection for the lost, an affection for the sick, an affection for those who are confused in this world, those who are struggling with addiction, struggling with abuse. And if we understand that, we will shine. We will shine before man because God is pleased with our faith. Wow. It's quite amazing. If real faith is absent or it's incomplete, we'll never have that affection. We'll never have that desire to be consistent. And therefore... Miracle working faith will always be either limited or non existent, period. Righteous affection with a goal of good works being produced. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Secondly, real faith will produce. Fruit, it'll produce an inward grace in your life. God's grace is sufficient, but it will produce fruit in our life. Real faith that does not have good fruit is not real faith. Matthew 7, just flip a page in most Bibles. Matthew 7, starting at verse 15, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. 
Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruits, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear good, ba- I'm sorry, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. Real faith, secondly, will produce outward fruit. When we examine our lives, is fruit that is good the product? Miracle working faith, for it to be carried out truly and genuinely with all authenticity, authenticity, must be done by individuals who are producing good fruit. If it is bad fruit, it's nothing more than a performance, nothing more than a show, nothing more than a feel-good moment, nothing more than, wow, we had a good service today, and then we go on our life, and we just go through the motions. Miracle working faith says, Lord, we want to see these mountains come down. I want to be in the game. I want to produce fruit that is good so that others will be, maybe others will be impacted by our life, just like as we study guys tonight from Philippians. Paul says, follow my example. Set, you know, set that as the, the mark as I have set the mark from Christ. Set that as the mark, okay? Well, it's the same thing here for us. God wants to use us to be a blessing on behalf of others. Notice, Jesus said, beware of false prophets, in verse 15, in sheep's clothing. May that not be us. That person's got bad fruit. No miracle's going to happen there. No real, no real step of faith is going to happen there. It's going to be all flash and no cash. All talk. The Bee Gees had a song in the 70s. Some of you remember this song probably before I was born called Jive Talking. Remember that, Frank? Bee Gees were the three brothers. Amazing harmony that they had. We're really good at jive talking. But the Lord wants us to be miracle working children that believe in him. That's producing fruit that is genuine and good. Number three, real faith will cause one to have a desire to be rescued by Jesus Christ. The greatest miracle is salvation because it's eternal. The greatest miracle is salvation. When God heals a person and they're a child of God, that healing is only going to be on this earth because they're going to be glorified when we get to heaven. Salvation is the most important miracle that God can do. It's not the only, but I believe it's the most important because it's eternal. Turn with me to Acts 16.30. You guys may know what question is about to be asked. This is the part of Scripture of the Philippian jailer. Acts 16. And I'll pick up at verse 29. You know the story, Paul and Silas were imprisoned. Well, I'll just pick up at verse 25. I'll pick up at verse 25, Chloe. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were loosed. Now here's two brothers that had real faith. They're in prison. They're not sitting in there complaining. They're in there praying and praising God. Now that's something I want. That's something I want. They're sustaining faith for you, and we talked about that this morning. These brothers are up in jail praising the Lord. We can't even get to church to praise God. Think about that. People say, God, I'll stick with you to the end. We can't even get you to church, more or less, sticking to God. 
through the end. But, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, the chains were loosed, and the keeper of the prison, awakened from sleep and seeing the prison doors open and supposing that the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. Because that was the punishment, according to Roman law, that if you're a guard and you let the guys escape, you die. So let's just save the agony, and he's about to take his sword, and he knows he's going to get blamed and kill himself. Do you know we have a lot of people in our community and in this church with suicidal ideation? It's all around us. And God wants to rescue them. He wants to save them. He wants to see their life turned upside down and inside out for the glory of God. He wants to rescue them. Real rescue will cause one to be rescued. Real faith will cause one to be rescued in Jesus Christ. For the greatest miracle of all, salvation taking place. That to me is something that's awesome. That to me is something that we should see regularly Every time we open these doors, people coming to know Christ and to see and to hear that they are rescued, praise the Lord. We heard that in testimony time tonight by Miss Nancy, a young child going into seventh grade, going down a wrong road, but rescued in time. Pray now that she be discipled. Pray now that she'll get involved in our youth group, praise the Lord. I told Pastor Joe, I said, brother, you got five people I've been ministering to while you've been gone. You need to get back. joker takes a month off on me he's excited praise the lord he's excited but they need to be rescued children needing to be rescued this jailer needed to be rescued he was about to do himself in but look here verse 28 but paul called with a loud voice do yourself no harm we are here now church real faith for a rescue story to take place, we have to be present and in the front lines. We can't take off. We can't isolate ourselves. Paul and Silas could have hit the road running and got to safer ground, but they stayed right there. Where are we? Where are we? Real faith, miracle-working faith. We see it with the apostles all throughout the book of Acts. They were in the front lines. What did they do when Jesus needed them the most? They all ran and scattered like sheep. They were nowhere to be seen, nowhere to be found. But that changed after Acts chapter 2. They had a real miracle working faith, and it caused others to be blessed and rescued, and they were present. Guys, I don't want to be on the outside looking in. I don't want to just be hanging up in the office collecting a paycheck, and I hope that's not what you guys want. I want to be as Paul and Silas were. We're all right here. Do not harm yourself. And look here, guys. I love this next two verses. This is what we should long to hear, the miracle working faith with the priority of salvation as number one. Then he called for a light ran in, fell down trembling before Paul and Silas, and he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Wow. This jailer was rescued. This jailer was at a point of killing himself. And a real faith will long to see every other living being come to know Jesus Christ and not get out just for our own safety. Paul and Silas could have took that road, but they stayed. And the jailer responded, called for a light, fell down, brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be rescued? Now you can add to that, of course, the other miracles. What must I do to be faithful? What must I do to be healed? But the most important in this context is what must I do to be saved? 
Has anyone ever asked you that question? In your life? I pray they have. Real faith, it will come often, I believe, as God uses us in the front lines. You say, Pastor, well, that stuff scares me. I, I, I don't think I could do that. With God, the Scripture says we can do all things. The Scripture says we are more than conquerors. The Scripture says greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. What are we afraid of? Real faith will produce a passion to see others rescued. Whether they're little children, little babies even. That's a tough thing when you hold a baby that's been abused and neglected. And I've held many of them. It's a tough thing. And it's all around us. But these mountains can come down through the exercise of real faith. Verse 31, so they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. You and your household. Now, this is what's key, church. Not only does God want to rescue the one person, but he wants to save the whole household. He wants, he wants to take that gospel and that one to go back and bring everybody to the saving grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. And to reveal himself in a way that is amazing. But look at what Paul and Silas said. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Real faith is centered around belief in Jesus. We see it in John. We see it in Hebrews. We see it here in Acts. We see it in Matthew. It's everywhere throughout the scripture. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you and your household. How many are standing on that tonight? Got any loved ones in your household that aren't saved? Any loved ones, children, parents, siblings that don't know Christ? Jesus wants to save them because the Father's will is that none should perish and all come to everlasting life. Continue on in verse 32. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all were in the house. And he took them the same hour of that night and washed their stripes. And immediately he and his family were baptized. Here the jailer takes Paul and Silas home, cleans them up. Remember, they're prisoners. They probably didn't smell good, look good. They had been beaten up, took care of them almost. This guy becomes the good Samaritan. He gets saved, family gets saved, and then people getting baptized. That's an amazing thing. Real faith, a, a, a rescue that is complete and genuine and real. Miracle working faith. Think if Paul and Silas had left when God brought the earthquake. Some of us, well, we, I got to protect myself. That's all we hear today from Christians. I got to protect myself, got to do all this and that. Well, to be honest with you, and these signs of the times unfold. The ones that are running to the hills should be unbelievers, but believers should be in the very front lines of battle. Real faith. Miracle working faith. Faith that is defined by Psalm 91. Faith that is defined by no weapon shall prosper that's formed against me according to the prophet Isaiah. Real faith that is causing others to be rescued. It's not time for Christians to flee, but it's time for us to run into the battle into the battle i remember 2001 9 11 and it's almost been 20 years and that's historic that's an historic number by the way for the prophecy of jeremiah preached on that earlier in the year but in maryland where mary and i lived my hometown is not far from dc my brother was at the capitol the Pentagon is just across the Potomac on the Virginia side. My dad, nuclear power plant, uh, all these hot targets that we were concerned there could be more attacks. And I remember watching on television after we got home because they released us from the school that I taught at. I went and picked up my niece and nephew who were in elementary school at the time, got them safe, make sure everything was good. Now remember, we're very close. And, and by noon, you could see the smoke all the way from the Pentagon 
from where we lived. We knew we were right there, okay? And my father, he wasn't released to come out until like midnight that night and, you know, all the things going through your mind. But I remember watching the video. Guys, the heroes of 9-11 were not the ones running out of the buildings, but the ones running into them. The heroes of today, the apostles of today, the true followers of today exercising real faith are those who want to see people rescued, not the selfish desire, am I safe myself? We have a natural disaster coming into Louisiana. We have California that has major droughts. We don't even hear about anymore because it's become common. Breaking records out there galore. We have flooding in Tennessee. We just had a hurricane uh, that came in, Henry, that came and did some damage in southern New England and New York City. We see the signs of the times even via natural disasters. Famine is becoming more of a concern all the time, especially well, California gives us so many crops. You see the price of food lately? Some of that is economy-related. Some of that is weather-related. Good old supply and demand. Economics 101. But whatever may come, may we want to see not only one person rescued, but their whole household rescued, just as they saw here. Verse 34, now when they had brought them into the house, he set food before them and he rejoiced having believed in God with all his household. Having believed in God. There we see it again. Believing in the Lord Jesus and this whole household was saved. Number four, and I'm almost finished guys. Real faith will produce a sanctifying soul. Sanctification means set apart from. From the world to God. The miracle of sanctification. The practical component that my life is no longer defined by worldliness and flesh. But instead by righteousness and of the spirit. Which is holy. Living inside of you. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. In verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks to God. Always for you brethren. Beloved by the Lord. Because God from the beginning chose you. For salvation through sanctification. By the spirit and belief in the truth. To which he called you by our gospel. For the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and hope by grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Wow. Real faith that is miracle working will produce the practical components of sanctification. Being set apart by God. Every day we must be set apart. It's an ongoing process. Real faith will say every day, Lord, may I decrease so you may increase. Less of me, more of you. More like you today, Jesus, than I was yesterday. Real faith will have a desire for, to have the passion of God, be, being zealous for God, being zealous for his word, being zealous for truth, and we're being sanctified every day, praise the Lord. That's what real faith will do. I ask you, are you any closer to God than you were a year ago? Six months ago? Do you have a passion to be more like Jesus tomorrow should it come than you are today? Real faith will produce the miracle 
of true sanctification. And lastly, real faith, miracle working faith, will open the door so Christ can reign in you. So Christ can reign, R-E-I-G-N, in you. Our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit if you're a child of the King. And He longs to reign in you. And that can only come by pleasing God through faith. God's anointing, His favor, His blessing, these things that are real, these things that cause God to move His mighty hand, these things that cause us to seek more of God every day in our lives to study the scriptures. I was reading in my personal devotion time where Jesus rebuked the Pharisees in Matthew 16 because they did not understand the times. They were so worried about the weather. They were worried about the color of the sky. And they were looking at the great I am. And Jesus said, what are you talking about, guys? You don't understand the times. They weren't students of the word. Real faith wasn't present. He rebuked them. What did he call them? Sons of the devil. They were aloof. They were confused. They were jealous. And they were part of crucifying him and calling him a heretic. Real faith will cause God to reign in us. I ask you tonight, is God reigning in you? Is that door open where God can use you as his willing vessel? one who is ready to exercise faith to be a blessing so that someone else can be rescued, so that someone else can hear the gospel, so that good fruit can be produced in our life, that we can have a righteous affection, which is evident by the works that are in our life, that was producing sanctification on a daily basis. Is God reigning supreme you say pastor why do we need to do that because of john 3 16 and a message that never gets old for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life those that endure to the end shall be saved I want to finish honey you can come Matthew 24 and Jesus said that it's like a woman with birth pains it's going to happen fast and it's going to get more painful as we go but he longs for real faith to be manifested and I'm going to read it tonight Matthew 24 beginning at verse 3 now as he sat on the Mount of Olives the disciples came to him privately saying tell us when will these things be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age and Jesus answered them and said take heed that no one deceives you for many will come in my name saying I am the Christ and many and will deceive many and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars see that you are not troubled for all these things must come to pass but the end is not yet for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there will be famines pestilences, earthquakes, and various places. And all these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. And you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, will hate one another. Then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. 
but he who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. The gospel will be preached to all nations. By who? By the faithful. By those who have real faith those that want to please God, those that want to have a miracle-working faith that will cause this earth to rejoice at the salvation of the lost, that will produce an affection for the lost with the evidence of good works, that will produce fruit in our life as real because God will only protect those who are faithful which is why he's coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. Those that endure to the end, those that don't quit, those that don't tap out. A sanctifying faith, a faith that longs to see individuals rescued. And all those things I just listed, there are people that will need to be rescued. And lastly, the door will be opened so God can reign. Remember, Jesus said, blessed are those who are persecuted. God longs to reign in each and every one of our lives. The question is, are we ready to take a real step of faith so he can do just that, reign in our lives? Father God, we thank you for your word tonight. Lord, I thank you for this five-part series that is concluding tonight. Lord, if we're not real, there's no way we can endure to the end. If we're not real, there's no way we can please you. And certainly no way we can follow your example or the example of the apostles. Lord, help us to be real. May we believe, Jesus. May we believe in you so that the works of the Father can be carried out and his divine will be carried out. Not our will, Father, but your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Tonight, I just invite you to come and seek the face of God. I believe everyone here has received Christ. If you're watching and you've not put your faith in Christ on Facebook, I invite you to do that today. You have a great need for the Savior. That's the eternal question. Does Jesus Christ know you as his child? Have you put your faith in him tonight? If you haven't, you can do it tonight. Admit you're a sinner. Admit you need the Savior. Believe Jesus suffered and died, but believe that he rose again the third day, proving that he is the Savior of the world. And confess him publicly. And you can do that right now on the Facebook. Write it in the comments section. I need Jesus. Someone will pray with you over the computer and I'll follow up with you. For those of you here, I invite you to come. Seek the face of the living God. Respond. Believe. Ask God to help you be part of the rescue story. Remember COC this year? Our theme. Ask God to protect you in the front lines. Ask God to give you boldness and not fear. To be like Paul and Silas and to stay and not run. Ask God to continue sanctifying you to be more like him. But let's take time before we leave to seek him in prayer while he may be found.
Lord God, we thank you tonight for all the verses that were shared. We thank you, Lord, tonight that we can seek your face. And I pray each and every one of us want to please you through faith in Jesus Christ the Son. Lord, we want your, Father, we want your works to be carried out through us, through faith in Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, be the man, the woman that you called us to be for such a time as this. Lord God, we thank you tonight for the testimonies that were shared. A time of worship tonight in praise. But most importantly, Father God, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins. The eternal miracle, truly, that is number one, is salvation. Lord, that our sins are forgiven. We are saved from your wrath in hell or the lake of fire. But we have a new home waiting for us as your heir. If it were not so, you would have told us. And we can only imagine what that new home is going to be like. Lord, thank you, Jesus. And I pray we will, Lord, be dead to sin, alive to Christ, and that each of us will take real steps of faith every single day. Bless us now with traveling mercies as we head home. Watch over us, protect us, bring rest to our body tonight, Lord, as we prepare to go back to work and school this week. But ultimately, I pray as we continue to draw closer to one another in times of testimony, worship, devotion, and prayer, such as this here tonight. More importantly, Lord, I pray that we will continue to draw closer to you. For your word declares in James 4, 8, that if we draw nigh or draw near unto you, you will draw near unto us. And, Lord, here today, you've been really, really close. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May God bless you real good. Wednesday night, 6 o'clock, step-up day, promotion night.
for our children and